Welcome to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Today it's the number 11 Virginia Tech Hokies taking on the Clemson Tigers. And a look at the top eight in the ACC standings. The Hokies are right in the mix. Meanwhile, Clemson having won its last three, making some noise here in February. And welcome everybody, Doug Sherman along with former Virginia Cavalier, Corey Alexander. So glad you could be here this afternoon. Now the Hokies may not be whole, but they are certainly still a formidable opponent for Clemson, which could use a resume building type win here this afternoon. And for Virginia Tech coming in without Justin Robinson, they have to make sure they're playing good basketball on the defense end of the floor. But for Clemson, it's simply about this recent resurgence of three straight wins. And Brad Brownell says that this team has played better. They didn't tr translate into wins early for Virginia Tech. Can they hang on right now? They're a nationally ranked team. Can they stay that way without five leading the show? Five is what they call Justin Robinson, but he saw for a left foot injury at Miami's missed the last couple he is out indefinitely also out today for the Hokies is PJ Horn Brad Brownell yesterday in practice prepared as though Robinson and Horn might play tonight but neither are dressed and so the ninth year head coach of the Tigers perhaps a little bit easier going here today well I'm not going to say easier going because Buzz Williams team plays hard every possession so therefore nothing will be easy against the Hokies but without Justin Robinson they're definitely not the same team. The Hokies in their Chicago maroon and burnt orange uniforms have the basketball first. This is Nikhil Alexander Walker, the fourth leading scorer. Make that seventh leading scorer in the ACC, and he's going to have a lot more responsibility as long as Justin Robinson is sidelined. And I believe Nikhil Alexander Walker will really play more of the point guard position with Justin out has turnover issues recently as Virginia Tech starts the game off with a turnover, but unfortunate, well, fortunately for the, for the Hokies, Shelton Mitchell unable to knock down the three in transition. And you see Nikhil Alexander-Walker with the basketball, initiating the offense. And, Doug, I think this is a guy that at the next level, the NBA will play the point guard position, so getting more opportunities now. With a hand in his face, Carey Blackshear, Jr. Well, he is definitely capable from beyond the three-point arc, and that's a difference because the way Elijah Thomas has blocked shots previously, 15 sh blocked shots in the last three games, Carey Blackshear being able to bring him out of the paint definitely helps Virginia Tech's offense. Amir Sims, the one non-fifth-year senior in this starting lineup for Clemson, misfiring on his first attempt. And here is Alexander, who in recent days was named to the Wooden Award late season top 20 watch list. He has made a huge stride from freshman to sophomore year with the left hand. What a finish. A beautiful finish by Alexander Walker. You know, in one of the areas where Clemson has been so successful, they've been able to recently take out the best score from opposing teams. Davis Scar has been given a lot of that responsibility to go out and guard the opposing best player, but he's got his hands full tonight having to go up against the kill Alexander Walker. Mitchell and Reed in the backcourt. Thomas and Scar are the bigs. Virginia Tech off to a good start. Two minutes in with the basketball up five. Now we talk about the wonderful shooters Virginia Tech t uh, has as a team. There's another turnover. But it's at the defensive end, the Hokies, obviously the game against NC State, perhaps an outlier, allowing your opponent only 24 points, but they've done a nice job for Buzz Williams this year. Well, that's been the change this season. This Virginia Tech team has been a top-level defensive team in the ACC to go along with their shooting ability. And, you know, of course, you, Justin Robinson leading the show with a lot of that, but even without Justin Robinson... Well, B. Sabidi is a great on-ball defender. They shouldn't drop off at all defensively. Offensively, you can expect some struggles, but on the defensive end of the floor, they should be the same unit. Well, Scarra got beat that time, but the help defender, Eli Thomas, with a big swat. And that's what Eli Thomas has been doing recently. Over this three-game win streak, Eli Thomas had 15, now 16 block shots during that stretch. And he continues to help heavy. That's where Kerry Blackshear could be big in this game. If his teammates are able to find him when they penetrate, he could get open looks. Yeah, Thomas had seven block shots Sunday against Wake Forest. Shot clock violation. Another five block shots in the win over Georgia Tech Wednesday. And he's got his first here this afternoon. And great recognition there by Amir Sims. 
Knowing that a desperation shot was going to be going up at the end of the shot clock, coming up with the block, not even giving Virginia Tech the opportunity. Well, Corey, at this end, for Virginia Tech defensively, the personnel is essentially the same as what it was last year. Why is the defense so much better this year? Well, you've got to give that credit to Buzz Williams. So what, basically, what they've done from last spring to now and going about how they were going to play defense, I believe that is definitely the reasoning why is this a different defensive philosophy. Mitchell picked up the loose ball. Marquise Reed no look to Thomas with the left hand. And he gets the Tigers on the board. And Elijah Thomas is playing very well on both ends of the floor. 23 points and 10 rebounds last Sunday here versus Wake Forest. And he's been playing very confidently on the offensive end of the floor. The question becomes, can he stay on the court long enough to stay effective in the post? Brad Brownell's done a nice job of protecting Elijah Thomas. If he picks up one, he likely comes out. Give him a chance to sit for a minute. In his last two games, he's picked up that first one, normally with about 17 minutes remaining. And so he's made it through that point right now. If he's able to get to the first media timeout, probably will get a sub. Here's Sheldon Mitchell, the fifth-year senior from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Worked the ball around into Thomas. Triple team finds Mitchell the open man. He hits the three and a foul. Great ball movement, that entire possession for the Clemson Tigers. Elijah Thomas relocating, finding Shelton Mitchell, who knocks down a three, an opportunity for the N1. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. Five five early on here at Clemson. Elijah Thomas is 6'9", 245, but Corey, he moves on the floor. Well, there's great ball movement, but also people movement on this possession. Elijah Thomas, as he sets the screen, rolls to an open area, but he doesn't stand still. You see him move across the block, getting great post position, forcing Virginia Tech to double team, and out of the double team, Shelton Mitchell able to knock down the three with an opportunity for the and one at the free throw line. Clemson, who started out 0 for 5 from the field, has now made their last two in a row, and with the free throw has a chance to take an early lead here at home. Thomas, the uh, Texas A&M transfer. This is Shelton Mitchell trying to complete the four-point play. He began his college career at Vanderbilt. This is quite a veteran Clemson team. Four of the five starters are fifth-year seniors. Mitchell, Reed, Thomas, and Scarra, all four of them began their Division I careers elsewhere. And then you mentioned Javin White as well, the graduate transfer, only the second-ever grad transfer at Clemson coming off the bench. So you've got five fifth-year seniors on this team, which makes it a very experienced team. And that's another block shot. Amir Sims actually coming over on that possession. The Reed going to pick up the foul. First personal on the redshirt senior from Landover, Maryland. The good news about White, he has actually got two years remaining. He graduated in three years at his first stop at Oral Roberts. That's impressive. And gets two years of eligibility, which we've seen. Cam Johnson did that at Pittsburgh and has now two years at North Carolina. Brandon Olsen at, at Georgia Tech as well, so... It's still impressive. Graduating in three years, I mean, I can tell you right now how difficult it was for me to graduate in the four years that it took, and that's adding all the summer school. Tell me about it. Reed finds the open man, and again, Mitchell makes it pay off. Well, and that's one of the areas where Brad Brownell has talked about why this Clemson team is playing better is because they're shooting better. Shelton Mitchell had a breakout performance versus Pittsburgh here at home, shooting the ball better, where he struggled early in ACC play. Of course, Marquise Reed has been on his scoring clip, but Amir Sims and David Scar as well starting to make threes. And that only opens up the offense for Elijah Thomas. The great drive by Marquise Reed attracting so much attention, finding his teammates. Beautiful pass, beautiful finish by Shelton Mitchell. Tell you what, Mitchell's shooting under 30% on the year, but he has looked like a 40% shooter on those first two attempts. He really has, and he got the opportunity in transition on the first possession of the game, unable to finish it, but... Hasn't wavered in his confidence at all, knocking down his next two threes. No points the last three minutes for the Hokies. Trying to stem a 9-0 run for Clemson. Tough shot off the mark for Alexander Walker. Offensive rebound, Hokies. Ty Outlaw brings it back out.
Med Hill finds the cutter. Will pull on the loose ball. And that's going to be on Kerry Blackshear. And you, that first foul on him is you're going to look at Justin Robinson rocking his own clothing line. Like it seems it. to be the five. I'm wondering why I haven't gotten one of those. <laughs> oh my God, he sent me one. You know, I'm Maybe. looking for a little bit of swag as well. I wear that. I got a gold pair of Jordans I could wear with that. Maybe fresh out of the box today. Give him a day. Give him okay. a day, Corey. Okay, well, that right there he could keep in the box. That boot on his leg. We don't want that. Keep that in the box. <laughs> Justin Robinson, of course, coming off of a 35.8 assist performance versus, sorry, Doug, your alma mater, Syracuse, oh my at home. But, you know, the thing is, against Miami, the game he got hurt, he actually had 17 points in 19 minutes. He was rolling along playing great basketball before the injury. And you know what? As the shot clock gets down to five, Mitchell creates, stays hot. He's got nine quick points. That game by the man they call number five, Justin Robinson, against Syracuse wasn't just the nine threes. He played the entire game very well. And, and according to folks who've been around the Hokies for a long time, think that may have been the single greatest performance in an ACC game ever by a Hokie. It's pretty good. That's that's saying a lot. Um, Malcolm Delaney. I was about to say, yep. I'm not sure if those people watch Malcolm Delaney. No, Malcolm did his thing, no doubt about it. I can remember I called a game where Malcolm Delaney and Gravis Vasquez went back and forth. Went neck and neck. They did. <laughs> first to 40 wins the game. Yes, first player to 40. But uh, the Hokies certainly are missing Justin Robinson indefinitely. Well, today we'll have the top three teams in the nation on ESPN. Number one, Tennessee has won a school record 17 in a row and will square off against Florida at 4 o'clock. Then it's Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and number two, Duke, taking on Corey Alexander's third-ranked Virginia Cavaliers. It's, of course, a sonic blockbuster. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Big college basketball day today. And now that we've gotten football out of the way. Well, football's never out of the way where we are here. I tell you what, Shelton Mitchell has gotten off to a great start. Buzz Williams not happy about that, but clips in a 14-0 run over the last 7-0-4 of this game. Virginia Tech got off to a great start, but since then, it's been all Tigers. Great ball movement once again, ending up with Shelton Mitchell, who knocks down his third three of the afternoon. Brad Brownell's Clemson Tigers on a 14-0 run that has been largely the work of Shelton Mitchell, the fifth-year senior out of Cuthbertson High School, has 12 of the 14 so far. Well, that's a good way to come out of a timeout. Layup off the nice feet. Outlaw's got his first two. A great execution right there. And you have to recognize where Ty Outlaw is at all times, his ability to shoot the three-pointer. And because of that, Clemson's defense wanted to make sure they run him off the three-point line great execution to get the easy back door yeah, outlaw leads the acc at 49 percent from the arc so defensively like you say Corey, you got to keep an eye on him on the perimeter allows him to sneak inside once in a while scara has it knocked away by wabisa Beatty. here come the hokies on the run out ahmed hill off the glass and in a well-timed timeout has worked well for the Hokies. It really has. And Wabisa Beatty doing a great job getting on the floor, coming up with that loose ball, and really able to get it out of his hands and not have a, a, a jump ball possession, which leads to two points on the end for Virginia Tech. Another takeaway. Beatty again to Hill. Brad Brownell wanted a traveling violation, but it's six quick points, and the Hokies are right back in it. All off layups, and the last two off of turnovers by Clemson. So self-inflicted wounds for the Tigers right now, allowing Virginia Tech to get right back into the game. Game started on a 5-0 Tech run, then 14-0 Clemson run, and six unanswered. Answering back by the Hokies, who can add to that. Does Tech miss Justin Robinson more on the offensive end or the defensive end? Definitely on the offensive end. Defensively, they have people that can step in. With Bisa Beattie, maybe their best on-ball defender. He can step in and take away the other guy. But then when you look at the, the, who you have to defend, getting the ball inside. And Shelton Mitchell right now knocking down the three. He's been the star thus far for the Tigers who still hold the three-point lead.
Ty Jerome, how's the back? Will it impact tonight's game? I text Ty Jerome last Saturday. Okay. After he missed the Miami game and told him, said, no matter what happens, you make sure you're on that court <laughs> next Saturday. And he sent me back a simple reply, LOL, don't worry. I'm not going to miss that one. I'll be there. So I'm banking on Ty keeping his word right. and playing in that game. But Duke also didn't have their point guard in the first matchup. And honestly, I'm not sure I mean, if, if there was one game that would have that they could survive without Trey Jones on the floor because of what Virginia does defensively, mm -hmm. it was that game. I think, you know, with Trey, he has to be able to make some threes, and he's done a much better job shooting the three ball this year. But he cannot allow Virginia to sag off of him. Otherwise, the Cavaliers will run away with one in Charlottesville. Well, JBJ or JPJ will be uh, rocking tonight, 6 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Two of the top three teams in the country, Virginia Duke going at it. Scara finds the open man from the corner, and that is the evolution of Amar Sims. Amar Sims is knocking down the three in the corner, and I actually made a brief comment to him earlier today, take the ball to the basket every now and then. Amir Sims, almost half of his field goal attempts are from beyond the three-point arc, and he's a capable three-point shooter, but he's so much more than that. I think he can help this team by being more aggressive, attacking the basket, and then keeping up with the three-point shooting percentage. Beatty, top runner. Yeah, the three-point bucket has favored Clemson so far this afternoon. Four out of nine. Meanwhile, the Hokies, who are the class of the ACC shooting the basketball, just one of six. Scarra, wide open look. Air ball to Thomas. They reset the shot clock. I don't think it caught iron, but it doesn't matter. You know, when you mentioned that Virginia Tech and their ability to shoot the three, and when you ask the question about where they miss Justin Robinson most, it's on the offensive end of the floor because Virginia Tech is a team that they assist on many of their wide-open threes. And you look back at the numbers, I believe 26 out of the 28 field goals versus Syracuse were assisted on. Both Justin Robinson and Nikhil Alexander-Walker had eight assists each in mm -hmm. that game. Similar to North Carolina, the game before, I believe, 21 out of 26 field goals. So without Justin Robinson, the ball moving isn't the same. And again, when you have a point guard like Robinson and you put the ball in his hands, he's often binding the shooters. And so that three-point percentage could drop a bit without him on the floor solely because it's asking other guys to play in positions that they're not used to being in. Right. Not all three-point shots are made equally. They're not. And when you drive and kicks are great. And again, Ahmed Hill... Nikhil Alexander-Walker, all these guys, BD, they move the ball very well, but they don't have it in their hands as much as Robinson does, who's normally finding the shooters. There's a reason why he's all-time leading assist man at Virginia Tech. Gary Blackshear with seven points. It's a two-point Clemson lead, 17-15. Big part of why Shelton Mitchell has gotten off to a hot start shooting the basketball this afternoon. He's gotten wide-open looks. He has, and, and they have the ability to put the ball in the hands of David Scar. Of course, Marquise Reed can make plays. Clyde Trapp when he's in the game, as well as John Newman. So they have a number of guys that can move the basketball. As you see, another great pass on the interior. Russell Westbrook leads OKC against James Harden in the Rockets. The 30-plus point streak stands at 28 and counting. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown, 8 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. And you can always watch both on the ESPN app from anywhere. NBA Saturday primetime is presented by HyperX Gaming. And also in that game tonight, Corey, Dante Grantham might get a chance to play in his second career NBA game. The uh, young man who suffered that devastating knee injury last January for Clemson got himself into an NBA game for the first time this past Thursday, made his pro debut. He said, my heart was racing so fast. You remember your NBA debut and I, how, how I, fast was I your do, heart racing? I do remember it, and my, my heart was reading, beating unhealthily fast <laughs> at that point getting into my first game. You know, but... You mentioned the 30-point streak, and, and, and to go back to Grantham, I sure am happy for that young man. He's done a great job, you know, in rehabbing, getting back. Look at that guy. Hey, wait a minute. Where's, 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 where's the gray hair? Where'd that go? It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely happening. But we talk about the James Harden streak. Mm -hmm. There may be a more impressive streak going on in that game. Russell Westbrook has a chance to tie Wilt Chamberlain for either the 
eighth or ninth straight triple double, which is amazing. Now, granted, 30 point streak is amazing by all means. I take nothing away from James Harden. But to go out and have a triple double in nine straight games, he has it right now in eight games, to be able to get to a ninth straight triple double, that's, that's amazing stuff right there. Back to this game. Kerry Blackshear, by the way, picked up his second personal foul. So he's been taken out by Buzz Williams. Virginia Tech really has nowhere to turn. He is their lone big, and without him, where do they turn? Well, right now, they'll have Ty Outlaw going in and manning the center. But one thing that Brad Brownell has not made the adjustment as to this point, this is where you really want Elijah Thomas in the game. And so, therefore, you can take advantage of that. Amir Sims, as we mentioned before, is more of a perimeter player. He can score with his back to the basket. But with the, with the lack of size for Virginia Tech up front, this is an area where you really want to be able to exploit Elijah Thomas and get him opportunities around the basket. Rebound grabbed by Marquise Reed. He is still looking for his first field goal. But we've got a foul off the ball, an illegal screen by Sims. Time out on the floor, and when we come back, we're going to take a look inside. Shooting with the shades. I was set up. <laughs> America, they set me up. Clemson 19, Virginia Tech 15 here late in the first half. And the Tigers, this is yesterday at practice. You can see... Marquise Reed wearing some shades. They're called Synaptech. It's technology originally started by Nike, and it's resistance training for the eyes. You've got flashing lights to simulate on-court distractions. It helps you to focus, and Corey, were you focused here before the game today? I was focused, but I can tell you right now, that one right there, that first one, I really like. But then, I'm fortunate that my our producers did a great job of not showing all my misses because I was a bit distracted by the glasses. But I can tell you right now, it definitely does give you a different level of focus once you take them off. Shelton Mitchell has been focused on the rim. He's got 15. He must have had those glasses on working out a lot over here yesterday and early this morning getting up shots because he is locked in on the basket right now. Well, the theory behind it is if you can focus with those glasses on when you take them off, your focus is even heightened more so. What did you think? I, I actually agree with that. And I'm not a gadget guy from the standpoint of in within the basketball game. And you and I beforehand, when I was watching them, I basically said this is a gadget. It's only because they've won two national championships over the last three years. <laughs> in football, they have the budget to do this stuff. But after putting them on and realizing how much more I am focused in on what I'm doing once I take them off, I believe that it actually does work. I was, I was made a believer earlier today. Well, we just saw Mike Buley, the uh, strength and conditioning coach for the men's basketball program here at Clemson, as Alexander Walker hits the three. And Buley is picking his spots, implementing it during practice around what the coaches say is okay. And he says, you know, five years ago, nobody was wearing heart monitors, and now everybody does. And whatever helps this program put the ball in the basket more frequently, they're going to try and do. Well, I'm not sure when they started it, but I can tell you right now, over their last three games, Clemson has shot the basketball much better and really shot it well, played well at NC State, the game they lost on the buzzer beater by Braxton Beverly. But they have played much better over this last stretch. And because of that, maybe the glasses do get a little bit of the credit. But I think Brad Brownell's defense has a lot more to say about it. Now, you during your seven years in the NBA were a 39% shooter from the floor. From which, the floor or from three? From the floor. Really? Which makes me think the goggles could have helped. <laughs> Boy, this has been a game of runs, Corey. The Hokies now have scored six in a row. It's a one-point ball game, and that draws a timeout called by Coach Brownell. Well, what's been shocking to me is the fact that with Kerry Blackshear having the 2,000 on the bench, Brad Brownell hasn't come back in with Elijah Thomas. Now, he could be thinking that it's difficult for Thomas to defend on the perimeter versus Virginia Tech. And because when they play Ty Outlaw at the five, he's a knockdown shooter. But, you know, I believe they could get advantage, take away the advantage on the interior. 
as you see, Nikhil Alexander Walker unable to score, but the kick out off of the offensive rebound, Jonathan Cabongo stepping in, knocking down the three pointer. He's a young, one of the young guys for Virginia Tech, but is definitely capable of shooting the basketball. Big time score, and will be another one of those guys that falls right in line with the three point percentage here at Virginia Tech. Yeah, Cabongo, the uh, younger brother of Mick Cabongo, the former Texas Longhorn, who has in his limited minutes for Virginia Tech this year as a freshman, now 4 for 14. For the Hokies as a team, third best in the country in three-point shooting percentage behind only Lehigh and South Dakota State. Just under six minutes remaining in the half. Reed tries to give it back to Newman, another deflection. Nikhil Alexander Walker knocked it out of bounds. Tigers will keep with six to shoot. And not a lot of minutes for Clyde Trapp early in this one either. John Newman getting the nod, of course, his defensive prowess. But a bit surprising that Eli Thomas hasn't checked back into the lineup. And Brad Bunnell going with Amir Sims at the five. I'm sure it's a defensive adjustment. I think I would take my chances with the big fellow on offense. Reed fouled by Beatty. And that's a tough one there. Wabisa Beatty trying to defend, recognizing that the shot clock is running down. But Beatty gives away about four inches to Marquise Reed. And so Reed, the bigger guard, trying to raise up a shoot. Beatty contesting the shot. Taps him on the arm as you see Marquise Reed named his dog after Simba. The Lanky, I mean, they're. That's not really much of a hoop scoop. There are like billions of dogs named Simba. I mean, The Lion King is one of the greatest all-time movies. No, you, you can't be down on any dog. I mean, to, to come at me with any negative energy over pointing out his beautiful American bulldog named Simba, it's the fact that his... How many, how many dogs... Do, it's probably seven different guys on the court right now with a dog named Simba. Elijah Thomas, last weekend, we asked him, what are you going to do for Super Bowl? He says, my dog and I are going to watch the game. I mean, again, how many dogs named Simba are there out there right now? How many of those dogs named Simba have an owner averaging 19 points a game in the ACC? No, that may lessen the pool a bit. So that's why we pointed <laughs> out for Marquise Reed. His pass, though, down to the low block, taken away. The turnovers have been a bit of a story for both teams in this game thus far. Not a high number, but... You know, this game is not at a high possession as Amir Sims does a great job defending the rim, coming up and getting involved in the block shot party. Reed to Scarra. Scarra on the floor. And the ball movement once again for Virginia Tech. Beautiful find from the Keel Alexander Walker, finding a Med Hill off of what is called a split. When you have two defenders, I mean, two offensive players coming together and then choosing which direction they're going to go. And great recognition by Nikhil Alexander-Walker seeing Mad Hill off the split. But that also has a part to do with the fact that Virginia Tech shoots to three so well. They get so much attention from beyond the arc. Oftentimes, teams leave them wide open under the basket, giving up layups. The possession arrow keeps the basketball with Clemson. Better close out this time by Cabongo, but it does not deter Mitchell. He's got 18. Well, and you see Virginia Tech in scramble mode oftentimes when the basketball hits the paint. And I'm not going to say that you change your philosophy, but the way Shelton Mitchell is shooting the basketball, you may want to stay tuned in to where he is and not allow him to continue to get wide open look. Long three by Ahmed Hill. Clemson back with it, up by five. Now the last two times, the last time these two teams got together in Blacksburg, Shelton Mitchell missed the game. And actually, Marquise Reed tied a school record eight three-pointers versus Virginia Tech on his way to 28 points. Tied the record of my guy Casey Rivers, of course, Oak Hill alone. Foul on the turnover. Foul is called on Marquise Reed. Second on Marquise Reed. And you see, as Cabongo's in the paint, helping defensively, just not enough time to get out and affect the shot of Mitchell, who's shooting a hot basketball right now. Five threes thus far in the first half. 
playing excellent basketball. And, and Brad Brownell knew coming into the Pittsburgh game, Shelton Mitchell was due for a good shooting night. And he had one against Pittsburgh, which started the win streak, and he's having a great shooting first half thus far here against the Hokies. Tabongo. Long rebound, Thomas back on the floor. And Mitchell is well on his way to a new career high. He has scored 23 twice in a game, sophomore year at Duke, and then last year against New Mexico State. Give him the assist on the triple by Sims. Well, and that is such an unselfish play by Shelton Mitchell. No one in the gym would have been upset if he shot that basketball uh -huh. as a heat check, but makes the right basketball play, find Amir Sims, who knocks down the three ball out of the corner pocket. Ahmed Hill going to work on Sims, who's called for the foul. Clemson on a run of its own, on top by eight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. Doug Sherman, Corey Alexander back in Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers are the ones shooting the lights out, namely Shelton Mitchell with 18 points. And Shelton Mitchell missing his first three, and then after that has run off five straight from beyond the three-point arc. Continues to shoot a hot basketball. Kerry Blackshear playing very well for Virginia Tech, but two fouls has him sidelined for the remainder of this first half. Well, Corey, coming up at the half, it's the E-Trade Halftime Report with Chris Cotter, Dallin Cuff, and Sean Farnham. Of course, they'll be talking about Duke, Virginia, previewing the Saturday slate at large as we see a Med Hill going to the free throw line for the Hokies. Question for you. As we talked about uh, Ty Jerome and how healthy his back will be for that Virginia-Duke game tonight, name me your top three Cavaliers point guards of all time. Top three Cavalier point guards of all time. I've got to go first with Othell Wilson, okay. my favorite Virginia point guard of all time. I will then go John Crotty. Okay. And after that, Harold Dean. Okay. Harold Dean. That would be my three favorite Virginia point guards of all time. Not, no disrespect to Sean Singletary. But I didn't get to see as much of Sean. I was playing in the NBA at that time. I was around Sean a lot. And, of course, one of the great all-time point guards at Virginia. But the three guys that I paid the attention to the most would be Othell, Crotty, and Harold. So could Ty crack that top three? Uh, there's, a, there's a great chance um, that he could. Now, very different. But what his all-time record will say, hopefully he's around the next year, and the number of wins that he could accumulate. And yeah. You know what? That, but now that you mention that, London Parentes. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, London was my guy. So, it, it, and that's really a difficult question to answer. Can I get five? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. But then you'll want a sixth. <laughs> this is true. Well, great defensive effort by the Clemson Tigers on that possession. A shot clock violation. As Virginia Tech playing small starts to pick up with the 94-foot pressure, a little bit of zone pressure in the full court. But now Elijah Thomas back in the game with Amir Sims having those two fouls. If I'm Clemson, the ball goes into 14 every time down the floor. He flashes and gets the ball out front. Being defended by Ty Outlaw, 6'6", 220. Two minutes remaining in the half. Scara gives it back to Newman again, trying to feed the post. Skip pass, trap. Beattie picked his pocket. Dangerous pass. Alexander Walker like a wide receiver, and he lays it in. I can tell you right now, I'm sure there are some football fans in the building right now. They have to appreciate both the pass and catch between Beattie and Alexander Walker on that possession. Trap, well short. Hokies trying to make a push late in the half. Wide open three is left short by Cabango. Long rebound Hill and goes into the trees. Blocked out of bounds. Tonight we'll have UFC 234 from Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne. And the home crowd will be behind Aussie middleweight champ Robert Whitaker.
in the main event against Calvin Gastelum. That starts at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. On pay-per-view, ESPN and ESPN Deportes will have the preliminary fight starting at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. To order the main event, go to ESPN.com. BD inbounds. Off the curl. Got a good look by Hill. That's not good. Shelton Mitchell took a tough hit there. Coming up a little ginger. Trying Washington to walk Thomas. that off. And Mitchell has... That foul is going to be the second or Thomas. And that'll get Javen White off the bench. And the graduate transfer from Moral Roberts will give Thomas the rest of the half off. And White, who really hasn't been able to participate much in this game because of the style of play by Virginia Tech. And Brad Brownell matching defensively. Number five, Hunter Tyson. And so now deeper into the bench goes Coach Brownell to bring in Hunter Tyson, a freshman from Monroe, North Carolina. A little extra size and length for the last minute 16 of the half. Thomas Reed and Sims all with three or with two fouls rather for the Clemson Tigers and so a lot more youth than usual on the floor here for the final minute seven to shoot get it into the hands of the hot shooter Mitchell he gives it up to the young man just off the bench Around and out for Tyson. Virginia Tech with a chance to tie or take the lead. Travel. Well, one thing Nikhil Alexander-Walker has not been doing this afternoon is settling. He has been going hard to the bucket. Well, and, and I expect that from Nikhil Alexander-Walker. He has the size and ability to beat his defenders off the dribble. But a great defensive job that time by David Scar getting back in transition and more importantly being able to defend without fouling in the open court. Alexander Walker, the only guy in the top seven in the ACC under six foot seven in terms of field goal percentage. He is fourth in the league at 53%. Well, and, and you see how versatile he is right now. He's guarding Gabe Scar, who's at the four position. He often has to do that. But this is a young man, as I mentioned earlier, who will be an NBA point guard most likely, but with great size at six foot five. Tyson strong along the baseline. Off the reverse. How about that for a little boost off the bench? Well, that's more like it. Your first possession coming in, you shoot a three. Much better success taking it to the rim. Final shot of the half, well contested by the Tigers. We've got ourselves a ball game. Shelton Mitchell lights out. The lead was as much as nine. Tigers head to the locker room with the lead. They are 13-1 in such matters this year. 33-29 our score. After the break, it's the E-Trade Halftime Report. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by 5-Hour Energy. Today it's the 11th ranked Virginia Tech Hokies taking on the Clemson Tigers. With Corey Alexander, I'm Doug Sherman. Hokies shot only 32% in that first half, and still they find themselves right in the ballgame, only down four. Well, their defense was impressive, and only three turnovers for Virginia Tech. But Clemson really got started shooting the basketball extremely well from beyond the three-point arc. And really the reason why they were able to come out with the first half lead. And the guy who really shot it better than anybody, Shelton Mitchell. He's on pace to shatter his career high this afternoon. And Shelton Mitchell knocking down five first half three-pointers. Five for six. Actually missed his first one. Then ran off five straight after that. 18 first half points, one assist, and most importantly, zero turnovers. The Tigers committed seven turnovers, but none by the point guard in the first half. And Shelton Mitchell playing excellent basketball for the entire 20 minutes in the first. And I want to point out, as we look at Mitchell's numbers, the career high five makes, Elijah Thomas always keep track of his foul situation. He's got two. Amir Sims has two. Marquise Reed has two. But Thomas 
Five rebounds, five blocks. So now over the last two and a half games, he has a total of 17 block shots. And Elijah Thomas has done a tremendous job defensively. And if you go back a game before that, three blocks versus Pittsburgh. So 20 blocks in his last seven halves of basketball. And I'm sure he's looking to continue that level of effort here in the second half, but also add some more points to his task. He's doing his best Tree Rollins impersonation. <laughs> hey, you can't come to Clemson and not mention Tree. You got to mention Tree, the all-time shot block king in Clemson Tigers history. That's one of those records I don't think will ever be broken mm -mm. because he set the bar so high, and you've had so many great Clemson bigs come along, Eldon Campbell, Horace Grant, of course, after Tree. But Tree set the record so high, I don't think that will ever get caught. Here's one of the best guards in Clemson basketball history, Marquise Reed, who had only five points in the first half, all from the free throw line. Thomas with the layup, and the lead stretches back to six. And that's another area where Elijah Thomas has been so effective recently is running the floor. Elijah Thomas missed a lot of time early in the season with the sprained ankle. Really through December, wasn't able to practice fully, but now you see getting himself back in the game shape, and his production is showing because of it. Blackshear kicks it back out to Wabisa Beatty. Yeah, the stat line Elijah Thomas put up Sunday against Wake Forest was ridiculous. 23 points on 10 of 11 shooting, 10 rebounds on those seven block shots. And you see he continues to work in the paint for the basketball. When you can see his numbers, he should get it. Unable to finish on that possession, but that puts so much pressure on the Virginia Tech defense. Also, the getting the ball inside the paint doesn't lead to those long rebounds to give Virginia Tech a transition. Marquise Reed has Amir Sims on the left. Ball poked out of bounds. Clemson will keep. Yeah, the efficiency this year for Elijah Thomas. He is second in the ACC behind only Zion Williamson in field goal percentage. He makes two out of every three of his shots. He really does, and he does a great job running the floor and sealing, getting great post position. And with Kerry Blackshear, of course, with two fouls as well, as we mentioned, the Clemson foul trouble. With Blackshear being in foul trouble, you want to make sure you get an opportunity to feed the basketball inside of Thomas. He's shown us earlier he's a willing passer out of the double team, but the Clemson offense moves much better when 14 gets his hands on him. Scarra, Thomas, Reed, and Mitchell, the four fifth-year seniors again starting here in the second half, along with the sophomore Amir Sims. Here is Sims. Four to shoot. Extra pass. Scarra's got to put it up. There's that Hokies defense. And it, again, great defense, but the possession's not actually stopped, which I thought it would be when the basketball did hit the rim on the 30-second violation. Big sequence for the Hokies. Stop at one end and the three ball by Ty Outlaw. And that's one area, of course, you know Virginia Tech is always going to be able to compete. Clemson won the first half shooting the three, but that's not going to deter the Hokies from getting their looks in the second half. Again, the Hokies are playing without their leader. Justin Robinson out indefinitely with a left foot injury suffered at Miami. This is his third missed game. Is Amir Sims a future All-ACC player, He Corey. definitely has the potential, but it has to be more like that. We know he can shoot the three, but taking the ball to the basket when he's forced off the three-point line and continuing to be aggressive instead of just giving the basketball up when he's not open from beyond the arc. Another block shot for Tree Rollins 2.0. <laughs> I mean, at the rate he's blocking shots now, he could catch or Tree. Or could you just call him Little Tree? Little tree. I mean, your tree was taller and bigger, but Elijah Thomas is playing tree Rollins like in the paint right now. Great job defensively moving his feet and then recovering to block a shot. The sixth block shot for the sapling. <laughs> okay, sa I like it. We won't call him tree, we'll just call him sapling from here on out. Mitchell, again, a clean look, unable to cash in. You know, and honestly, that's probably the most open look that Shelton Mitchell has had in this game other than the first one that he missed. Maybe Shelton needs more of a hand in his face. Well, i tell you what. Clemson is looking to block every single shot as Virginia Tech drives hard. But with that, Sims picks up his third personal foul. And remember, Amir Sims was the guy that Brad Brownell had playing in the post with Elijah Thomas on the bench, especially against a smaller Virginia Tech lineup because Amir Sims does a better job guarding perimeter players. 
So that's a big foul right now. Hunter Tyson will enter the game and play the four position for Amir Sims is, is Justin Robinson, of course, sans crutches, hopping up and down the sideline, coaching with B. Sabidi, and that's really one of the roles of a guy. I can remember being in that position with a broken ankle during my third and fourth years at the University of Virginia and coaching up Harold Dean as he was out running the point as a freshman and then a sophomore and trying to be, have any type of impact that you can. And, you know, that's just great leadership there by Justin Robinson talking to Abisa Beatty, trying to help him figure out the nuances of this game, especially with his increased role. Well, Justin Robinson was second team all ACC last year. You can make a case that he's the best point guard in the ACC this year. I mean, you've got others you can argue about, but he's certainly in the conversation. Well, I would say through the first eight games that he was able to play in in ACC play, he was in first team all ACC consideration, especially at the point guard position. And now that all ACC team, especially the first team, is going to be a lot of decisions have to be made on that one because you've got a bunch of candidates. Thomas mishandles. Hokies come up with it. Gara and Blackshear were going after it. It'll stay at this end. Virginia like, Tech keeps. I like the way Blackshear ran the floor on that one. Thomas actually, when he got mixed up and fell down, Blackshear did a great job sprinting the middle of the court, putting that pressure on Clemson's defense. I've talked about the veterans and the fifth-year guys for Clemson. Virginia Tech stacked as well. Justin Robinson already a graduate. Ahmed Hill already has his degree. Kerry Blackshear has his degree. Ty Outlaw as well has his degree. Shot clock down to two. Blackshear recognized. Wilkins denied another shot block for big number 14 in white. You know, and I knew Elijah Thomas was a very good shot blocker. But he's a great shot blocker right now. I mean, it doesn't matter how you attack him. He is making it happen. Over and back. Isaiah Wilkins stepped on the midcourt line. And so it'll be Clemson basketball. Elijah Thomas, or should we refer to him as Sapling Robinson <laughs> right now, denying every opportunity. What a Saturday slate we have for you in college basketball. Of course, the 6 o'clock Duke-Virginia game is the headliner, 6 o'clock ESPN, but just as impactful perhaps in the ACC. How about 4 o'clock on ESPN2, 16th-ranked Louisville, number 22 Florida State. And Louisville, like Clemson, on that resurgence in ACC play. I'm sorry, Florida State, like Clemson, resurgent in ACC play. Louisville starting off great. And the, the loss at home to North Carolina going in and winning at Virginia Tech, trying to stay at the top of the heap. So something has to give in Tallahassee today. Looking forward to that matchup. And you know what? If we had one more slot on that Saturday slate, I would add another 10 p.m. Eastern game. Big one in the Pac-12. You've got Washington and Arizona State on ESPN. Can you dub run the table? Well, and the thing there is you're talking about really the only two teams in the Pac-12 that are in consideration for getting an at-large bid in the NCAA tournament outside of winning the Pac-12 tournament. So, huge game between those two teams. Yeah, Joe Lenardi's latest bracketology has those two from the Pac-12. It could wind up being just a one-bid Pac-12 conference this year. Which would be amazing if the conference that's been as great as our guy Bill Walton, of course, loves to refer to as the Conference of Champions. But to be able to only get possibly one bid, that would be tough. 20 points for Shelton Mitchell. There you see Joey Brackett's latest work. ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, SEC all with eight apiece. American with four, Big East three, and uh, Pac-12 for the moment, even with the Mid-American Conference, with two in the field of 68. Blackshear with the flush. Now that was a smart play. Now, and, and here's the thing. Kerry Blackshear makes a great play and gets it done. Elijah Thomas, of course, we talked about the beginning of the game. Kerry Blackshear's ability to shoot the three makes him unique. But Elijah Thomas closes out. And 
instead of getting a foul, he gives up the dunk. The dunk hurts, but Elijah Thomas picking up the three would be picking up the third foul in the first half would be much more detrimental. Thomas makes a smart play of letting Blackshear go, and then you know you see the rotation, which is tough for a big guy like that. But by letting him go, he does not pick up that third foul and is able to stay on the floor, especially with Amir Sims on the bench. And this is the benefit. When you get the ball inside the 14, that's why you need him on the floor. Those seven block shots match his career high. Now six points on the emphatic dunk. May not have gotten the block shot there, Corey, but he certainly impacted the shot. But look who's already down the floor trying to get post position. Elijah Thomas running the floor. Scara. No. That's Hunter Tyson flying in. And he Brown gets now. called for the foul. Brad Brown now appreciating the effort by Tyson actually coming out onto the court. But earlier possession... This is why you need Elijah Thomas on the court. Does a great job of sealing, great position, and an even better pass from Shelton Mitchell to get it into the hands of his big. And that low, Elijah Thomas is difficult to deal with. Now you see the first Texan ever to be a Clemson Tiger began his college career at A&M. Now that's hoop scoop right there. You like that one? I like that one. That's great hoop scoop right there. Out of Lancaster High School in Dallas. And 1-4 picks up the personal. Now, I'm wondering who that... Now, see, that says that he was hit on the... Clarence Armstrong came over and told us, well, didn't tell us, but told the scores table that he was hit on the arm. But it looked to me as though Elijah Thomas had both hands in the air going up vertically within the restricted area on that possession. Nonetheless, Nikhil Alexander-Walker at the foul line shooting two. As you see the attack, Elijah Thomas. Oh, you see a great call. All right, great call right there by Clarence Armstrong. You see after the play right there going down. Great job by Armstrong. I didn't see that in real time. There's a reason why I'm over here. Mm -hmm. And they're on the court doing the officiating. We've got Clarence Armstrong, Jamie Lucky, Ramey Steins. Great group of officials in this game. And, of course, when, you know, you have a big game like this, you got to have the big-time officials on the floor. And Clarence is big time. Mitchell around Blackshear to the right hand, but he couldn't get the roll. Then came up looking for the foul call, which didn't come. Oh, that's when you got to call a million-dollar move, 10-cent shot. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful drive by Shelton Mitchell, just unable to finish it. Well, I tell you what, the skill set on the offensive end for Kerry Blackshear really can take your breath away. It, it really is, and he is a very skilled player. And Blackshear redshirted, I believe, his second year at Virginia Tech and watched Zach Lede operate the way that Buzz Williams loved for his bigs to play. And you can see a lot of that influence really paid off for Blackshear. Came in with a great skill set, of course, the ability to shoot the basketball, but much more than a six foot nine shooter now. Offensive foul, Reed called for the forearm shiver. And that's going to be third on Reed. As you see, Kerry Blackshear operating on the post. Javin White trying to take away the middle. But Blackshear with that great touch, able to finish off the glass. And now Reed will go to the bench with his third foul. And Clemson playing without two of their best players. During a crucial stretch here as Virginia Tech has an opportunity to take the lead on this possession. As you mentioned, Blackshear sat out the 2016-17 season with a leg injury. He had surgery to repair a stress fracture in his lower leg, and he's been better than ever since coming back. Here he goes to work again. Alexander Walker. He's been successful getting into the lane, but this time he used a little hook and is called for the offensive foul. And another great defensive possession by David Scar as Clemson's able to hold on to the one-point lead. Doug Sherman, Corey Alexander back in Clemson. We were talking about uh, the bracketology of Joe Lenardi, and there you see UCF and Temple, two of the last four in. That gives you the four American.
Meanwhile, on the flip side for the Pac-12, ASU the last team in, so they are also on that slippery slope trying to give the Pac-12 two teams in. Clemson, Brad Brownell's team, is 14-8 uh, and eight overall, 4-5 and five in conference play. They won three in a row. They're trending in the right direction. Still don't have that resume-building signature win, which this one could be. But the reality is their net is 43. You see the BPI 33, so they're very much in the conversation. Yeah, and they don't have a, a bad loss. Their worst loss being Creighton, and you saw Creighton on that list. So, which means that that's not a bad loss for Clemson right now. But playing in the ACC, of course, you play a tough schedule. They play Duke at Duke to open up the schedule. They have Virginia here. And so they play probably the tough, one of the toughest schedules in the league thus far. And the reality is, during this three-game winning streak, Clemson has had a more favorable conference schedule. They uh, had Pittsburgh and Wake Forest both here and then at Georgia Tech. And so maybe that's the chance to stockpile some wins, but you do need to pick off some of the big boys as well. Blackshear with some cotton sticking out of his nose, got some uh, medical attention during that last timeout. Javin, Javin White getting involved in the shot blocking party as well. And you mentioned earlier, it seems as though the Tigers are trying to block every shot that goes up. Dangerous pass, bodies go flying. Alexander Walker is gonna be called for the tripping foul. And right now, the Virginia Tech bench not happy about that one. And you got two guys both going after the basketball. And the kill Alexander Walker, a little slow to get up on that possession. But Walker actually was the guy that tipped the basketball and got the deflection. So as he and Clyde Trapp are going after it, Trapp goes down. And Walker gets called for the foul. And for Nikhil Alexander-Walker, that is his third. And right now, the advantage is 11-0 in the block shot category for the Tigers. Of course, Virginia Tech doesn't play a big lineup. So that's not a strong part of their defensive effort. Mitchell, step back, long two. Beattie looks around, doesn't see enough of his teammates, and so they will set it up in the half court. No look, Alexander Walker, pass deflected away to Shelton Mitchell. Poked away by Alexander Walker. It comes free to Reed. And there is his first made field goal of the afternoon. Through the bodies to Beatty. Long three point shot off the mark by Outlaw. It looks like Blackshear's picked up another. Javin White doing a great job boxing, boxing out on that possession. The third on Kerry Blackshear, but previously. As you see, as the basketball goes up, White does a great job finding his man, a textbook block, box out, and going after the basketball. Blackshear doing a great job pursuing it, but give Javin White credit for staying in position. Blackshear picks up his third personal foul. Buzz Williams calls timeout. ESPN of the ACC will bring you the ACC network in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. And I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to among many things, Corey, is next spring when baseball season comes. You know, the college baseball season starts Friday around here. I was able to see some of Clemson's baseball practice yesterday afternoon. They're in the top ten in the country. I believe Buzz Williams has gotten a bench warning from Jamie Lucky. Coming out of the timeout. I tell you what I'm looking forward to. The first, I believe, live event on the ACC Network will be Clemson Tiger football, baby. Mm -hmm. Clean look, Hunter Tyson. And the freshman from Monroe, North Carolina, with five unexpected points off the bench but today. I, I tell you what, and this is what I love most about that. 
The most excited person about that possession was Marquise Reed. And you see the offense, the defense exciting the offense. Oh, big call by Jamie Lucky on that possession. That's going to be the fourth foul on Elijah Thomas. Foul is called on Elijah Thomas. His fourth. As you see Reed come up with the steal, unable to finish at the rim. Elijah Thomas comes in, and you see the right arm extend, pushing Nikhil Alexander-Walker away from the basketball. And what we thought was an easy put back for Thomas ends up getting him a seat on the bench and now having to play very costly over the next 8.49. Did he really dislodge the opponent? Did he do more than touch him? As Dave Chappelle once said on his great show, I'm going to plead the fifth. Foul is going on Amir Sims. That's his fourth. Fourth foul on Sims. Wow, big turn of events for the Tigers Six, now, losing five. their starting front court. Both guys with four fouls. Amir Sims just checking into the game and picks up the fourth on the first defensive possession. Hunter Tyson going to be called into duty after making a big three. Blackshear powers in two more points. As the boos cascade down from Little John Coliseum. The dog, remember, we had a 41-40 game. Virginia Tech had an opportunity to take a lead, and just like that, it was a 6-0 run for the Clemson Tigers. But since then, after the bucket by Blackshear, you've got Elijah Thomas and Amir Sims both on the bench with four fouls and those are huge plays especially leading to the final eight minutes Mitchell blocked help side defender Ty Outlaw swatted it out of bounds with one second remaining on the shot clock eight minutes even remaining in what's been a hotly contested game Clemson led by as many as nine, but Coach Williams and his Hokies are right in it. With Corey Alexander, I'm Doug Sherman at Little John Coliseum. Clemson holding on to a five-point lead in what could be a huge statement win against number 11 Virginia Tech. Both teams dealing with some foul difficulties. Tech dealing with an extremely short bench without Justin Robinson and without P.J. Horn, both out injured indefinitely. And right now, interesting to see what Brad Brownell does. One second remaining on the shot clock. And you have the opportunity to draw up something. A different formation for Clemson coming out of timeout right now. Reed gets a good look. Did he beat the buzzer? They say he did, but it rattled out. And you can't ask for much more than that with one second. A lot of moving parts executed right there to get Marquise Reed a great look, unable to finish it. And Reed, as you mentioned, only one bucket in this game thus far after a then-career high 28 points a year ago against Virginia Tech. But I'm sure that got him vaulted right to the top of the scouting report. Also being the fourth leading scorer in the ACC. Attracted some attention. First foul on White. Well, Brad Brownell has both of his parents in town from Evansville, Indiana for the weekend to join the ball game. Not an uh, unusual sight to see his dad Bob at practice, who was here yesterday. Brad Brownell, big time player. Went to DePaul University, of course, but teamed up with Calvert Taney in the backcourt mm -hmm. in high school. Harrison High School in uh, Evansville. Yeah, big time shooter. So, of course, if you're Indiana high school basketball, you've got to be able to shoot. I can remember watching Brad when he probably his first or second year as a head coach at Clemson in shoot around. Out shoot everyone on his team in shoot around. Now, Brad was a great shooter, but that's also a problem when the coach is the best shooter. It, <laughs> you know, it, it was a struggle at times shooting the basketball for Clemson back then, but it hasn't been here tonight. Reed has it poked away by Beatty, giving up his body as Blackshear to save it. Turnovers have definitely hurt Clemson in this one. Virginia Tech with five second-half turnovers thus far, but they've handled the basketball much better as we see another block shot from the Tigers. That's really what they've made their difference in this game is on the defensive end. David Scar continues to impress 
you know, you and I were talking about who's the first team all ACC, but Davis Gar has a great chance to be on that first team all ACC defensive team this year. What he's been able to do, of course, he continues to take on the challenge of guarding opposing team's best player. Doing a great job thus far to kill Alexander Walker. And you know what? Brad Brownell didn't think he was going to have David Scarra back for this fifth year. He had gone home to Croatia and anticipated turning pro, but at the last second decided to come back here to Clemson. Near Sims checking back into the game with his four fouls. Going to have to be smart on the floor, especially playing in the post. The officials have been keeping an eye on the post play thus far, especially when you're trying to dislodge your defender to get position. Tyson, Mitchell, Sims, Scara, and Reed, the five out there for the Clemson Tigers. Looking for their fourth win in a row. Reed forces up the runner. Sims doing a nice job on the glass. And that's one of those plays where, as that whistle was blown, the collective breath of everyone here at Little John Coliseum with Amir Sims having that basketball wanted to make sure that that foul was not on him. And it ends up being a fourth foul on Kerry Blackshirt Jr. So now pretty much all of the significant bigs on both these teams are in foul trouble as we come down the stretch. And here's Shelton Mitchell, who had 18 points in the first half, just two so far here in the second. Scar, give it back. Sims. Beattie fighting for the rebound. And it comes to the Hokies. And you know, that's another area where Virginia Tech has been different this year. Over the past couple of seasons, you've seen the Hokies get dismantled on the offensive glass. But even though they're not playing with much bigger size, probably even smaller than they've been in the past few years, they're doing a much better job on their defensive board. Beatty doesn't look to shoot very often, but this offense doesn't need him. <laughs> To shoot a lot. He did a nice job to find Blackshear. Yeah, great job by Ty Outlaw coming in and gaining another possession. <laughs> Pass deflected out of bounds by Clemson. And Alexander Walker slow to get up. Well, you see Alexander Walker attacking the basket. Davis Scar coming over in help position. None of the Little John faithful are saying that was a foul. And, of course, the official's worst enemy, these dynamic jumbotrons that we have in the arena, but you see coming across. But regardless as to what, there's contact. And so, you know, I, I agree with that call because there is contact. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is going to the basket. And it turns out to be Clemson's basketball anyway, getting it back off the Med Hill turnover. But with the contact right there, I have no problem with that call. Brad Brownell gets Elijah Thomas back onto the floor. The Tigers didn't score while he was on the bench for that short spell. But five, you know, over five minutes, significant amount of time. Elijah Thomas has to make sure he stays out of foul trouble. And whenever you see a big man driving the basketball like we just saw from Thomas, <laughs> you're always thinking that, of course, with the intelligent guards that Virginia Tech has, you're thinking somebody's going to lay in there and try to take a charge. They'll take that risk. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the ball in Elijah Thomas' hands trying to make drive and kick plays. Second foul on Ty Outlaw, the grad student from Roxboro, North Carolina, granted a sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA after he missed the 2015-16 season with a heart condition and then missed last year with a torn ACL. Davis Gar unable to get his first points on the afternoon, but his contribution has definitely been on the defensive end of the floor guarding one of the ACC's best in the kill Alexander Walker and done a tremendous job of that thus far Beattie uses the screen probes into the paint
tries to find Black Tree, instead brings it back out front with seven on the shot clock. Here's Beattie, rising up. Mitchell, dump it off Thomas. Wide open, ring for three. Mark that sequence down. What could have been a tying three for Beattie. Five seconds later is a three at the other end. And it's called the six-point swing. You miss a three on one end, come up with the rebound, go down, knock down the three on the other end. That six-point swing allows Clemson to hold a six-point lead. Marquise Reed knocking down his second three of the afternoon to the delight of Eli Thomas. Back in Clemson, South Carolina, that Miami-Carolina game is going down to the wire. The Canes up 72-71, and if the Tar Heels drop that one at home to an unranked Miami team that is depleted, you'll see that the game tonight at 6 o'clock between Virginia and Duke will be for sole possession of first place in the ACC. It will be, and also remember that I believe Virginia goes to North Carolina on Monday for Big Monday. So a tough sledding coming up for the Wahoos having Duke tonight at home. And then North Carolina on the road. But North Carolina in the fight right now with the Kings. Alexander Walker. Long rebound comes to the Tigers. Under four minutes remaining. Here's Mitchell. He has cooled off considerably in the second half. Foul against White. Didn't allow Alexander Walker to go where he wanted. Second foul on White. And the kill Alexander Walker. A bit of a struggle offensively tonight. Give Davis Gara a tremendous amount of credit for what he's done defensively. Three for 13 from the field for Alexander Walker. 11 points and four turnovers to zero assists where he's become the primary ball handler for Virginia Tech with Justin Robinson out of the lineup. Another big miss for the Hokies. Down by six. The first missed free throw by Virginia Tech in this game. Actually 12 for 12 going to the line just now. And the team that shoots over 75% from the free throw line actually have a chance to break the all-time record as a team in Blacksburg this season. Scar. Tough shot. He had Blackshear all over him. Now it's a 6-0 run. This matches the largest lead of the day for the Tigers. Mitchell picks up the personal. That's just his first. And so Nikhil Alexander-Walker, the young man who left home in Canada at the age of 15 to chase his basketball dreams in the United States, he said at the time, Corey, he cried. I mean, the culture shock leaving mom and dad, and we see it more and more in basketball, but the country he is from in hockey, that is just part of the culture that you leave as a teen to go chase your hockey dream. And I can remember he actually played at Hamilton Heights in Tennessee, and we played against him. Uh, Oak Hill against Hamilton Heights. We actually played against he and his cousin, Shea Gildas Alexander. And the, those two made a pretty, pretty formidable combination in the backcourt. I would think so. Walker 
Elijah Thomas having himself a good game this afternoon on both ends. Marquise Reed over Beatty. And Beatty with the rebound. Well, the Hokies have had only three of their own score here in the second half. That continues as Beatty misses the mark. Blackshear earns himself a trip to the line. Alexander Walker outlaw and Blackshear, the only three Virginia Tech players to have scored since the break. First foul on Scara, number 10 against the Tigers. Two free throws upcoming for Kerry Blackshear Jr. Now from the ages of 4 through 12, Blackshear lived in Spain while his father of the same name was playing professional ball. He had stops in Venezuela and the Dominican Republic as well. Let's throw it back to Chris Cotter for an update on the Canes and the Heels. Blackshear makes the second. And it's back to a five-point ball game. Sounds like they've got a good one going on in Chapel Hill. We've got a great one going on here in Clemson. Right now as the Tigers are trying to get a signature win over a top 25 team and build their NCAA tournament resume. Sims drives around Outlaw, draws the second defender, which leaves Mitchell open. Thomas! And a foul on the rebound. But I'll tell you what, if you're Brad Brown now, you wish Elijah Thomas had a couple more years of eligibility. <laughs> you really do. And I believe that's going to be five on Blackshear. As Kerry Blackshear has been extremely productive, especially on the offensive end of the floor. But Elijah Thomas does a great job getting that inside position as the shot goes up. Almost has the tip to put it back in. As you see Elijah Thomas, and one thing, he's constantly moving. Does a great job here, really boxing out, and then gets his hand on the basketball, but you see the nudge by Black Blackshear with the left arm. And again, not a tremendous amount of contact on that play, but there also was a tremendous amount of contact on the play where Elijah Thomas picked up his four fouls. You remember dislodging Nikhil Alexander-Walker from right. getting a rebound. And so the officials are being consistent on both ends of the floor. That's the one thing that you ask. If they're going to call it on one end, you call it on the other. Corey, they're going to overtime in Chapel Hill. Canes and Tar Heels tied at 77 at the end of regulation. Well, that does not favor the Hurricanes. No. And when you, and you know, Miami's done a great job of fighting in games for, you know, often 37, 38 minutes and fizzled out at the end. Getting to 40 minutes has been spectacular for the Canes to be able to do that as Thomas misses two free throws. But playing an additional five minutes with only, you know, six, seven scholarship guys, which Miami's playing with, could be tough against North Carolina on their home court. Wilkins in for Blackshear. No, and you know the offense here in the last few minutes for Virginia Tech has just stalled. And as you talked about in the first half, Corey, missing Justin Robinson, especially at that end, is really tough to overcome. Yeah, he's the guy that makes plays for himself, but more importantly for his others. The all-time leading assist man at Virginia Tech. And he's the one that makes this offense go. Marquise Reed, long two, nothing but net. And you also mentioned that Justin Robinson is a senior, similar to Marquise Reed. But when you put the basketball in their hands, regardless of the way the game is gone, at the end of the game, you normally can count on those guys. And they're going to get a foul on Alexander Walker on this possession. No field goals in over seven minutes for Virginia Tech. And now a turnover that hands the basketball back to the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, you can't win any game, let alone one on the road against a quality team, without being able to put the ball in the bucket for that extended stretch. And you see that Alexander Walker does not stop. Runs immediately into Shelton Mitchell, who's trailing the screen. And that's an easy call for this officiating group. Hey. 
And now the Tigers will try to play keep away. Well, they want the ball in the hands of Mitchell and Reed, their two best free throw shooters. That's who they want to have the basketball in the hands at the end of the game. Fifth foul on Nikhil Alexander Walker, so he will join Blackshear on the bench, having also fouled out. Well, the last time Clemson took down a top 11 team, you just saw it on that graphic along the bottom right. Clemson looking for a big signature win here. A fourth straight win in conference play and to get back to 500 in the ACC. Well, this is a Clemson team that started the year in the top 25. Struggled a bit early, lost to Creighton in the Cayman Islands, lost at home to Rutgers in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, lost to Mississippi State. But again, they're not losing to bad teams, but again, for a top 25 team, unable to take advantage of those opportunities. And to Shelton Mitchell, an 80% foul shooter on the year. Gets the first. Sports Center tonight after Washington, Arizona State with John Anderson and Kenny Bain. They'll recap Thunder Rockets with James Harden's 30-point streak on the line, plus Jay Billis's takeaways from number two Duke and number three Virginia, as well as post-fight reactions from Australia. Talking UFC, Sports Center, midnight, ESPN and the ESPN app. I can already tell you what you're going to learn from the Duke Virginia game: that Grant Hill will not walk into the building with that ugly jacket he sent me a video he had on last time. There it is. You guys have had this uh, social media back and forth. I knew it was coming. We got 25 seconds left, and uh, the former Wahoo gives a little right hook to the former Blue Devil. Well, he texted me last night, let me know that he would be in the building. So I sent out a tweet to all the UVA faithful to make sure that they reminded Grant Hill that he's from the state of Virginia. And although he did uh, go to a different ACC men's basketball act, you know, institution and play basketball there and get an education there. He got his socializing degree from the University of Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure that everyone in the JPJ knows that this evening. Timeout. Buzz Williams. So now let me tell you this. Buzz Williams called a timeout earlier in the week and drew up a play similar to what's going on right now to try to make sure that they got a score. And when asked about it, he simply said, because an eight-point loss is much better in your net standings than is a ten-point loss. This timeout is called to execute and get something going offensively. Right now is Virginia Tech trails by 11 points if they come away with the score here and Clemson holds the basketball doesn't shoot if they lose well they're, they're most likely going to lose this game right now I don't think they're coming back with 11 points but it is better to be able to lose by nine or eight than it is ten according to the net standings so many people did not like what Buzz Williams did during that however from the NCAA tournament standpoint, this is a smart timeout by Buzz Williams to try to execute and get a bucket at this point in the game because we're already talking bracketology. Yep. And if that net is going to be the deciding factor, this is what you have to do in coaching. I'm not sure this is what their plan was, but Buzz Williams is basically coaching to get his team to the NCAA tournament. I don't mind that timeout at all. I know there are people that may have had issues with it, but I don't mind that timeout because he is basically making sure that he's building his team's resume going into the tournament. Yeah, Virginia Tech came into the game 10 in net. Clemson 43. And again, that's the new analytic system being used by the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee this year. And now they get a three-pointer. This is an eight-point game. They're not going to foul. And it's an eight-point loss in comparison to a ten-point loss, which looks much better regarding your NCAA net. More importantly, though, it is a signature resume-building win on their home floor for the Clemson Tigers. 59-51. to 51. Final thought, Corey? Clemson on their way ascending. Virginia Tech have good showing here. Tough hanging on without their point guard. Clemson runs its win streak to four in a row.
For Corey Alexander, I'm Doug Sherman. Now let's send it back to the studio.